TNTM The Show presents Talking Nerdy. With your hosts, Pablo Gunner, the Ambassador, and Marvin Goof, yo. And we're here to talk nerdy to you, as we have been for the last 13 years talking about comics, video games, movies, shows, all the nerd stuff, because we want to save you the time. We don't want you to waste your time. We want you to put your time into the best of the best. So we're willing to waste our time so you don't have to. So we're going to be covering some Star Trek Discovery. Let's move on to Star Trek Discovery, which I actually didn't think we would get to this, but I did watch the first episode of Star, Dis Star Trek Discovery final season, season five. So I, I liked what I saw. Uh, I love uh, I love the main chick. What's her name? Sasha or something like that. Uh, Michael. Oh yeah, that always weirds me out that that she has a dude. No, Michael but like Herman. the actual actress though. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that the actual name, her the character, her name's Michael, and I'm like. I, that's weird. That that's so. Weird. And then the fact she has the last name Burnham is weird too. Yeah. Mm. Because you know who her adopted parents are literally. No. Spock's parents. Oh. Like, wow. Okay. Not even like, not even like partially like step. No, no. Like literally, yeah, adopted wow. parents are Spock's parents. That's amazing. Okay. And I mean. That that's cool. what I mean. Like I'm as, wearing the shirt. And I don't, I mean, I don't know. That, that's what I mean as Spock's sister. <laughs> that's incredible. That, now you know why I'm like, why would everyone just, like, forget someone? Right, yeah. It, Dear gracious. Like, that's Spock's sister. You watch Star Trek movies, and emotional things happen. It would come out. It would come yeah. out. It, when your life is on the line. Well, it's future stuff. Like, it's hard to, like, retcon that stuff. You know what I mean? Like, you're moving forward, you know, so... I'm yeah, like, well, that's why, why they I... threw them in the future. That's why so suspension could... of, uh... Of what? Belief or whatever? Disbelief? I don't know. Maybe Anyways, not. so... But, yeah, uh... Yeah. I will say, like, because I watched the first season. I started the second season. And so, now I just jumped into the fifth season. So, I was feeling kind of lost. But a lot of the... So, I go, like, oh, a lot of these characters are further along, you know... Mm -hmm. They've moved up, well, they've changed. literally, like, thousands of years into the future. Yeah. It, it's complete. The tech, it looks different from uh, the other ones. Uh, you got Starfleet's completely different. Like, uh, in, in the final season, Earth finally joins Starfleet. Because Earth wasn't a member of Starfleet in the future. Wow. When the Great Burn happened, they are like, screw you guys, we got our own plan to worry about. Mm. And left. Wow. And uh, Vulcans are somewhat part of it because uh, they made this up with Spock. Spock uh, brokered peace between the Vulcans and the Romulans. Oh, wow. Okay, and uh, when the Romulan planet overloaded and destroyed, mm -hmm. they actually just all went to Vulcan. They, they became their ancestral name, the Navar. Oh, okay. They called themselves the Navar, and so... Navar wasn't a member of Starfleet as well, and they joined mm. back later. Interesting. And wow. they chose to do that with the help of Burnham, because she's Vulcan, so she could at least relate to the Vulcan part of Navar. Okay. But it's kind of interesting, because you got, like, Vulcans all about logic, and then you got, like, very emotional Romulan mm -hmm. part part of the factions as well and that's Navarre and they're part of the part of Starfleet now and the Vulcan lady that you see that Saru's interested in oh yeah she's the president of Navarre oh okay okay and that's why she's involved so much there because she's their diplomat for Navarre mm -hmm. which is the Vulcans and the Romulans okay Dang, All right, cool. More big swings in that case then. I think. Yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah. I mean, from what I saw, like, like I said, it was really interesting. I just saw the first episode. I had a good time. It's really fast paced, but obviously, I, it does reference previous seasons which I haven't watched, so I did feel mm -hmm. lost. Uh, that's a good. That's a pro and a con at the same time, right? Because mm -hmm. you don't you don't want to leave the previous seasons behind, but you don't want to make people feel too lost when you're rolling into a new season. So. I did feel a little too lost, but I think obviously if I watch more, 
I'll I'll get caught up. I would just watch the previous stuff and then come back. Oh, okay. It's just gonna. There's just a lot that there's goes on. There's too much. But mm, <laughs> like okay. you, you gotta know about the burn. So basically, the reason why Starfleet was in shambles when they got there was because the fuel for like all the starships of like multiple races they've all come down to the same fuel source right I well I heard that fuel like that. source just catches on fire and starts burning you got some real problems going on Jeez, man. and that's Ooh. called the great burn oh okay and so they so they have a se season where they're trying to deal with just figuring out what their place is in the future mm. and then they find out how the Great Burn happened, and then they all, then there's this mysterious anomaly that keeps destroying planets and other entities, Jeez. and they're trying, and they had to figure that out. That was the latest season, and then it's this one. Oh, okay. Well then. Yeah, it's a, a lot happens. Hmm. Yeah, it's not it's not too bad. Uh, the only thing I really kind of my big issue with Discovery from the beginning is it, it's it's a good story, but it doesn't feel Star Trek. Okay. It just never really feels like Star Trek. Because it's too fast-paced and too action-based? or No, just like the whole story arc and how oh, okay. the characters are just don't feel Star Trek. Because if you watch like Star... Like the Starfleet you see in there... Like, I'm not talking about J.J. Abrams' Starfleet. I'm talking about, <laughs> like, uh, mm -hmm. the original movies. It just doesn't feel right. Like, even the whole Roka thing was a good twist. But it didn't really feel like it fit with the rest of it. Mm -hmm. And plus, I kind of like I like the Star Trek movies way of the Klingon and Starfleet getting along better. Mm -hmm. Where... It's just two people, two allies who, like, don't want to bother killing each other. So they just kind of do a very loose armistice where it's like, <laughs> we won't kill you if you don't kill you. <laughs> because uh, even even in Deep Space Nine, like, the Klingons are not part of Starfleet. Indeed, yeah. They are yeah. not. But as more conflicts go on, the more they're like, well... Starfleet's not bad. We deal with them all the time. We'd rather deal with a potential enemy we know versus enemies we don't know, and that just gets them closer till they become like drinking buddies in mm -hmm. uh, Deep Space Nine. Pass the gag. <laughs> uh. <laughs> which which uh, Deep Space Nine is phenomenal. Oh yes, yeah. like in this series that got me into Star Trek. Um, but yeah, yeah, Discovery, you just don't really get the the same feel of Starfleet. Okay. okay. I, I mean, I loved the first season. Uh, I, I obviously wasn't in love with the second season, so I didn't keep watching it. But uh, this season, from just the first episode that I saw, I my grade, I'm going to give it a, it's worth checking out. Mm. Yeah, check it out if you have time. Okay. Yeah, it's not the top priority, obviously. I, I wouldn't really put it as a top priority. If you really want to watch Star Trek... Yeah, if you want to watch Star Trek. If you really want to watch Star Trek, I recommend watching yeah, Star Trek, the movies, two through uh But I mean, four, if they want new stuff. And then mm -hmm. six. If they want new stuff, what that's that? That's what I... Brave New Worlds or Strange Worlds or whatever. Worlds, Strange yeah. New Worlds. The first season was pretty good. I still need to watch the second season... It was solid, but like the weakest part is of Strange New World is it relies very heavily on Discovery. Oh, okay. Because uh, when you watch season two of Discovery, you got Captain Pike there, and it basically continues after what you see at the end of season two okay. of Discovery is where that starts off, and it's him dealing with what he knows. Which I felt like was just really weird because everyone knows what happened. Like, Captain Pike, it's known what happened to him because he watched the pilot episode of Star Trek, like the original Star Trek series, mm -hmm. and it tells you the fate of Captain Pike mm -hmm. in that episode. But they just keep, uh, they're trying to do a throwback 
and so it works but at the same time it it just kind of takes away from the rest of the storytelling okay mm -hmm. but i i would still like for season one of the of strange worlds i would give it a watch okay but yeah we'll we'll tell you how season two is once we get to it mm -hmm. all right cool so we have our merch that we're sporting uh i have the fallout stuff which might be going away off the site after this month because we're going to be reducing our site to only 100 products so this is probably going to be going away because this is merch of the month after that it's, it might be going away completely i mean if you still want it we'll we'll find a way to get it to you we can make that happen but it's not going to be on sale because this is the only time that it's going to be on sale with free shipping by grabthar's hammer What a saving. Uh, which is the, it's the vats, and then it says, so you're telling me there's a chance, like from Dumb and Dumber, <laughs> from that meme. Uh, so I love it. And there's all kinds of shirts. This is the tank top, and this is a small, which works for me. And then I also have the X-Men hoodie, uh, which I love, and, and it's so great. It's not too heavy. Um, this is a medium, and uh, it, fits, it fits pretty good. Um, and then of course I have the I have these Ninja Turtle shorts and then I got my um, my Mortal Kombat socks which I don't even know if we're gonna we're probably gonna get rid of a lot a lot of stuff like I said we have to reduce our store a lot so it's it's a lot of this stuff is going away but if you want it hit us up for it and well I'll, I'll even hook people up with codes if they if they want just like discount just codes. message us but yeah me. just message let us. us know and we can we can find a way to make it available for you to purchase it yeah it's yeah. not a problem at all. I'm rocking my uh, Talk Nerdy to Me Ninja Turtles shirt. Probably one of our best shirts we have here. Live, laugh, love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's just awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, that is Star Trek font right there. And I adore it. It makes me happy. Yes, so, and we have <laughs> other ones. I have, there's another one that says Live Long and Prosper. There's also another one that has the uh, Spock quote that he says to... Uh, to Kirk when he's dying um, so uh, yeah but I almost felt like maybe we should have gotten him the the shirt or be like you know what you guys switch shirts you know like because he, he, this guy's spitting the but this is the ambassador that's why he, he has the nerd knowledge that's why we call him the ambassador my so, parents are Trekkies he's so he knows this stuff so <laughs> that's, yeah that's how I know my parents are Trekkies so you just have to know that kind of stuff Growing up in a Trekkie household. Mm. So, but yeah, uh, and once again, you know, we're going to do the shout-outs. Shout-outs always to Atticus as our number one shout-out. And then uh, we have Amerame Media, as well as others. M M uh, MK Jekyll and Hyde makes uh, comics. They're phenomenal. I love their inspirational posts. And, uh, yeah, we have, uh, we have, don't we have another one that... Oh, yeah, uh, we're... Still working on getting a collaboration with them, but the horror fiend. I was talking to one of the main guys that runs it, and uh, yeah, they 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 do mostly like horror movie type of stuff, and then they're gonna do a nerdy nerdy uh, channel as well. So it's great to see them joining that. Uh, uh, one of one of the guys that's heading it, he, he used to work at a comic book shop so i think uh he's gonna have a really good perspective on nerdy things oh Excellent. yeah yeah i i remember i see i feel like i see him at all the cons too or i usually see him at the cons so well for new mexico comic expo he was head of security for oh okay that. there you go that's that's why there we go, wow. <laughs> so all right cool i did fail to mention too that five percent of our profit goes to a charity of the month we have a different charity of the month for the month every single month uh for Abril, it is Autism Speaks, and then for Mayo, it's going to be National. Uh, it's the the it's Nami is what it is, but it's it's mental because it's Mental Health Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. It's related to that, so that's what we're going to be uh, donating to for next month. So uh, I believe that's it for us, right? Yeah, that is. All right, cool. So talk nerdy to me. Stay nerdy, Planet Earth. Keep it real. Keep it nerdy, man. <laughs>